Hola. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Ignacio Martinez. I'm an economist in mathematical policy research. Mathematic, Mathematica has more than 40 years in experience of US policies around the world. Today I'm going to speak about a tool which we develop, developed at the request of the US Educational Department for Educational Technology Office. And the tool was launched officially in January, just very recently, but it's now available online. I'll give you the web address so that you can access it. It's only available in English for now. We hope that that will develop in the future. The name of the tool is EdTech Rapid Cycle Evaluation Coach. So now I'm just going to call it The Coach to keep it simple. And as I said, it's a project which was developed at the request of the US Educational Department Technology Educational Office. It's available in English. And the objective is to enable rigorous evaluations for decision making. What's happening in the US right now is that the school districts and the schools themselves have so many options of different technology that they can adopt in the classroom, but they don't have a way of finding out which tool really works. So they have to constantly be deciding, should I purchase the license for this technology or should I maintain the one that I have? Should I change the way I'm using technology or should I continue as I'm doing now? What we have done is we designed the platform for users who have no techn technical knowledge and they don't have much time. So we were thinking about a school headmaster who want to use the information available but they don't know how to use it and they need some help. The tool is free of charge and the source code is all available. And that offers a great degree of transparency so that people can see exactly how it works. It's designed for evaluating techno educational technology. However, all the examples, all the tools which you can learn how to use through the coach, you can also apply to other decision making. So changing curricula, you can use the coach to take that type of decision. We've already used it for more than 10 school districts already, but there's more than 70 school districts across the United States which have expressed their interest in using this tool for informing their decision making. So just to understand the why behind this tool and how to use this technology. Nowadays, we all have to be taking decisions all the time. And what we have to bear in mind is that the decisions entail costs and associated, associated risks if any wrong decision is taken. So having the right information is very important for decision making. And how can we get this right information? There are three important factors. Firstly, you have to start with the right question, a good question. What do we really want to be asking? And how will those answers then inform the decisions that I want to take? Next, we need the right data to be able to answer that question. And often what happens is people have access to data and they don't even know this. We live in a big data world and the technology that we use can collect all types of data, which could make our lives more easy if we know how to use it. And finally, we need to be using rigorous methods. Often, this is the biggest problem that we see. People don't know how to use rigorous methods. And since it's not a rigorous method, they can often reach the wrong conclusion. The good thing is that the coach that we have designed makes this process easy, fast, and the coach is free of charge. So when should I be carrying out an evaluation? 
there are several examples which I would like to show you. So this is a list of some of the examples which I see most frequently when I speak to school headmasters and the school districts. So for example, what is the effect of a new intervention? So maybe introducing a new technology or change the way I'm using technology or change the curriculum on educational achievement. And what do we mean by educational achievement? So quite often it's academic achievement. So I want to know how technology is helping the kids to learn maths. And there's a way of measuring the mathematical academic achievement. In many cases, people are interested in using technology to improve non-academic achievement. So we can use the coach for that as well, to ask this type of question. There are other cases where what we're interested in is helping teachers to make the best use of their time. Or perhaps what they're trying to understand is which is the best way of implementing a technology. Initially, these technologies are used to improve certain things, but maybe I already know what the technology can be used for, but what I don't know is what's the best way of implementing it. In some cases, there is technology which works really well for some types of teachers or some types of students, but not for others. So we need to understand who does this really work for. And in some cases, the question is, how much time should I be spending on a certain activity? In other cases, what happens is people are using technology in the classroom, and there are so many different options available. And it's difficult to understand which are the best options to be using and which not. When I went to a school district one time, they were using a software to help kids to learn how to read. And the good thing was that they could create their own steps. So there were some people who were at a really advanced level, and so they were beyond their grade. And what I saw was there were some kids who were not doing their tasks, but and so they were playing games. And I asked what was happening, and they said, no, no, if you're doing well with your reading, you get these virtual coins, and you can use those coins to play games in that time. And some teachers decided to use them, others chose not to. But they didn't really know what was the best option. You know, should they be getting these virtual coins or not when they weren't doing their tasks? When you do these rapid cycles, this can, you can use the rapid cycle to help to answer these questions in just a question of weeks. Another series of evaluations, which is very much of interest recently, is I have an outcome in mind which I want to improve, and I want to see if technology can be used for this. For example, many schools are looking to increase parent participation or reduce school, not turning up for school. So there is technology to communicate with parents. So when you send an SMS, what type of language should you use in that SMS to parents? So these are things that can be learned. What's the best way of going about this through rigorous methods? What I'm going to speak about in particular is impact evaluation. And the key of impact evaluation So you can see that this is related with this other point, but we're not saying that this causes the other factor. So our objective here, looking at the impact, is to consider the causal effect. So what is the effect of introducing a new technology on academic achievement? To do this type of impact, assessment is impact and counterfactual. So the impact of a program is the difference between the two things. The findings of the participants in the program who are using the program, the software, or the results of these same participants, what results would they have had if they had not participated in the program? 
And the counterfactual scenario would be if we were in a parallel universe with the same people, the same students, the same teachers, the same parents, they did not participate in this program, how would the results have been different? And so then the difference between these two would be the result of the program. So the counterfactual scenario would be what results would the participants have achieved if the program had not existed? And this counterfactual scenario is important. Sorry. On the left, we see the universe where we see the pupil in fifth grade and their academic achievement. So on the left, we have a group of kids who have their computers. And for that group of kids, I can see how their maths is going or any other subject. I can measure that. My counterfactual, my ideal counterfactual would be this parallel universe with the same people, the same kids, the same parents and teachers, but no computer. So if I could have these parallel universes, then I could see what is the causal effect of the computer simply by looking at the results of these two universes. But in reality, we can't have parallel universes, but we can use statistical methods for things like this. Let me give you a simple example to show why counterfactual is so important. On this graph, we have time and results. At a moment in time, we introduce an intervention. It could be a computer for every kid, or it could be a new app for learning how to read. And we want to see what's the impact of that app. So you might be tempted to think that the difference is how the kids were doing just before introducing the technology and how they're doing now. So we could say that that difference is the impact. However, it's important that you understand that we cannot call this the impact. That would, we need the counterfactual. In this example, the counterfactual scenario, the kids would have continued to improve their academic achievement, however, at a lower rate. So the impact is actually lower. So maybe without introducing the technology, the kids would have reduced their academic achievement and so the impact would have been higher. Or they could have been above the red line and so the technology introduced has had a negative impact. If we don't look at the counterfactual, we can't see whether in reality the technology has been good, bad, or in fact has had no result. So identifying a good comparison group, this counterfactual scenario is important. What we want to do is compare the, indicate, the results of those using the technology against a comparison group, a group that's as similar as possible to the first group of kids, but without using the technology. A couple of things to keep in mind. Compare the indicators before and after is not a good idea because time elapses and many things can happen as time elapses. So a before and after comparison in general is a bad idea. Comparing people who are using the technology and those who are not using the technology is not a good idea either because if there are volunteers who are using the technology, these volunteers can be very different from those who are not using the technology and that difference may therefore be behind the impact. So the best idea is to use rigorous statistical methods, for example, random allocation or statistical pairing to understand this contra counterfactual. And in this way, we can understand exactly, well, we can attribute the impact to the technology and not to another factor. So just quickly, I want to explain the two methods that the coach uses. So that's random allocation and statistical pairing. We start with a study. We have to understand whether we're starting it now or if we're looking at data after the technology has been introduced. So in this case, in the evaluation, we have a group of 
students, or parents, teachers, and we use random allocation to decide who is going to use the technology and who will continue to use the traditional practices that have been used until now. And in this way, we can guarantee that any difference that we see between the two groups can be attributed to the technology. So all we have to do is compare the results and see what the effect of technology has been. And this is what we call the gold standard in research. And this is what is used, for example, uh, when we decide what drugs to be approved in the US. It requires this type of evaluation to see whether the drug has, is effective or not. There's another type of evaluation, which is statistical pairing. And in this case, we have a group of potential users. And you might see that there's different symbols on their heads to show that these are different individuals. And when the technology is introduced, some choose to use the technology, others choose not to use the technology for whatever reason. And then we begin the evaluation after the technology has been introduced. So what we can use are statistical methods to form a group as similar as possible the group that is using the technology and the group that is not using the technology. And there are statistical methods which can show how similar those groups really are. And then by comparing these, we can see what the effect of technology is, whether that be on academic, non-academic achievement or on other factors. So I don't have much time left. What the coach does is it does rapid cycle evaluation. What I was speaking before about impact, quite often that can take years. What we want to do are rapid cycle evaluations so that we can continue, be continually learning and not be taking up too much time, use that information in our decision making on a daily basis. So we carry out the evaluation, we use rigorous methods, we have a continuous improvement model, and we identify the results quickly. That's the objective of the coach. The coach will guide you through five steps of rapid evaluation cycle. Firstly, it will help you to ask the question that you want to ask. Then it will help you to identify the outcomes and the sources of data. It will help you to define the comparison group, either through random allocation or statistical pairing. It will it will analyze the data. You don't need to have any statistical knowledge. It will ask, the coach will ask questions in very simple English. And based on that, there will be a statistical an analysis using quite sophisticated statistics. And then the coach will produce a two-page report in really simple English, straightforward, so anyone can read it without knowing anything about statistics to understand what are the outcomes after this process. I don't have time to show you the full coach tool, but I'll show you one of my favorite points, which is how to craft a good question. The coach will ask you questions like, what is the intervention or the product that you're trying to test? What is the outcome that you're trying to affect, academic achievement? How engaged are the parents with the school? The coach will ask you, what's the interest group? It's very important to say I'm studying fifth grade kids or high school kids because the results will be different. What is the comparison group? That will help you to think about the importance of a good comparison group. And let me give you an example of an incomplete question. Does app X make a difference? That question is lacking a number of things, and the coach will help you to craft a better question. It will also help you to think about the answer, how that answer will help you to inform your decision. The question has three potential answers, yes, no, or I don't know. And based on those answers, people will want to take different things. I'm sorry that I'm running out of time, so I'll just skip through this quickly. The coach analyzes your data, and it uses Bayesian statistics. So it can say there's 80% probability that App X will improve the fifth grade academic maths achievement 
get based on this result. So just skip through this quickly because I'm running out of time. The coach will also generate a findings brief. It's a two page report in simple language and it will say, yes, we think that app X is improving academic achievement. Here, there's X percentage probability that the achievement will be increased. And there's 90 percent probability that academic achievement will be increased at least by X number of points. This is all automatic. Please, I'm just uh, running quickly to the conclusions. So we can speak later in the coffee break. The conclusions are rigorous evaluations can help you to inform important decision making. So should I introduce, implement this new technology or not? How should I implement the te technology? Having a good counterfactual scenario is essential. The effect of this is 90% of teachers will be happy. But you have to think about the counterfactual. If they don't use that technology, maybe 95% of teachers will be happy. We can carry this out using data that already exists and quickly. And the coach can do this quickly, easily, and free of charge. Currently, it's available in English. We hope to improve that. Please send me an email if you wish send me a tweet, and here's the information about the coach. Thank you very much.